Hello everybody, I'm Alexey Karabrov, the organizer of SF Spark, and here we're on location at Chart Boost uh, at our meetup about Spark and Tech, and we have uh, Alex from Critio. Uh, so Hi. Alex Alenikov, he's the software engineer at, at Critio working on Spark. Welcome, Alex. Hi. So can you tell us a little bit about Critio or Critio? Why do people say it differently? Uh, and and what do you do there and what Critio does? All right. So Critio or Critio. Uh, it's a pretty big ad tech company, one of the unicorns, unicorn startups in France. Uh, pretty well known, except that in US maybe not. Mm -hmm. So uh, what we do is a bunch of different stuff at pretty decent scale. For instance, we do RTB or we do retargeting and for that we have huge infra. Uh, for, to give you some numbers for reference, we serve like 30 billion requests in our RTB uh, per day and we have say 20, 30 uh, hundreds of nodes in our Hadoop cluster, so we do stuff at scale, and part of the complexity go comes with that. And we also have uh, smaller projects, which are uh, longer shots, not necessarily at the same scale, but much more agile. Uh, one of them is Search, which stands for Optimizing uh, Search Engine Target uh, Search Engine Requests. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's what I'm working for. for with. Cool. So uh, for those folks who are new to attack, you know, what does what is RTB? Maybe you can explain a little bit what the challenges are. All right. So RTB is uh, a me mechanism which stands for real time bidding. Is um, a thing when your pub uh, your publisher just about to display the ad. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a thing ha happening on the background which basically pause all the. Uh, possible people who want to display the ad mm -hmm. and ask, okay, here's the user, here's the page on which I want to display the ad, and how much do you want to pay me for me? Right. You pay me to display the ad. Right. And that happens in about like 40, 30 milliseconds, so Amazing. you have to be super quick with your decisions, and that's what people do. I was really surprised when I learned about it, maybe a year ago, uh, I, I was you know, thinking like, you know, you turn like a piece of wood you found on the ground, right? You open it up and like all oh, those bugs there, right? So, so, so this is like, you don't know when you come to a website, right? This yeah. bidding is happening at once, right? Like all these, you know, living mechanisms behind this. So, so, so this whole area of all, right? So one of the reasons we do this meetup, again, if we want to showcase the attack as an industry, right? And tell engineers more about it because we have a lot of engineers in this group uh, who kind of do traditional uh, uh, systems, mostly, you know, APIs and kind of data bases, right? So, but this whole area is very fascinating. So how did you get interested in, in that tech? Well, first the problem, of course, I guess the the most complex thing in ad tech is the amount of data we have to crunch, because mm -hmm. not like few of the industries have that amount of data. Because in ad tech, you have all like all the huge amounts of those tiny events which make up the whole difference, and we have to crunch them at big scale. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what attracted me in the first place. So having like having to play with the, all that infra, solving problems with no space for making any mistakes, mm -hmm. uh, stuff like that. And plus, I was uh, processing the data and extracting knowledge in my previous job, so that's. Was kind of a, that was kind of a natural transition for me. So you know, uh, like uh, tens of milliseconds is clearly not the time which Spark uh, works on, right? So yeah. How, so how does this work? Uh, do you guys uh, can I explain a little bit how kind of uh, Spark is in this pipeline, which leads to these uh, very fast decisions? All right. So historically, uh, in Critio, we use Hadoop for offline processing, and we slowly replace it with Spark. Mm -hmm. uh, so to serve those queries, you you obviously have to use machine learning and. Uh, obviously, machine learning has its own offline part, so that's mm -hmm. what uh, the offline processing is used for in Critio in general. Mm -hmm. uh, again, historically, we, we have Hadoop there, but for the new projects or for the refactoring of the new code, we have Spark, and that's pretty much what we do. Plus, uh, as I told you, we work with uh, uh, search engine advertising, so that uh, we're, that's a like. That's an uh, area in which the uh, performance requirements are even higher. So that's Google. Google does not allow you to do the R T B, and instead you bid offline. So you you have your own modifiers, you have your own bids, mm -hmm. and if you want to do it offline, obviously Spark is a good fit because there you don't have such strict requirements on your side. All the requirements mm -hmm. are fulfilled by Google. Right. Right. Uh, interesting. And so uh, we had. Uh, um, uh, Credio uh, engineers speaking earlier at our conferences, so we know Justin Coffey and others, and you know there are very interesting projects uh, around you know Cassandra and Spark and like open source systems at, at Credio I, I heard about. So uh, how come you guys evolved such an interesting engineering culture? How did you pick these tools? 
how does it work? How, how does the knowledge spread inside the company? If you can tell us a little bit about engineering culture. All right, so I think every, every group in, within the company is pretty much uh, on its own with this. So of course we have technologies which are kind of promoted, but you have no you have no means to force people use technology. So people mm -hmm. just come up with whatever fits better with their problems. Mm -hmm. And then when we have critical mass of people which use the same thing and they have sh shared knowledge, we have a concept of guild. Mm -hmm. uh, so guilds are basically groups of people who are interested in the same topics and mm -hmm. they want to share the knowledge, they want to promote. And then when people can, uh, come in and they ask questions, they always have you know, the authority to answer them. That's the way it works. Uh, do you have any mechanisms to spread learning? For instance, if somebody wants to learn more about Spark, do they find people who know Spark, like they find you? How, how does it work? Uh, well, again, it very depend, like it depends a lot on the on the team you're working with uh, because like there are no strict rules. Uh, for instance, some teams they do uh, tech talks some uh, within the company. Some mm -hmm. teams do tech talks even within projects. Mm -hmm. uh, there are initiative uh, initiatives on the company uh, level, but Mostly the knowledge spreading is going on by individuals who are interested in that. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly what you, told, what you told me before, like you're just into knowledge sharing. If, mm -hmm. you, if you are, then you just do it. And mm -hmm. some people take their time and they do it. Cool. And the company supports this? Yes. Yeah. So. That's really, really cool. I mean, that's, you know, this is what I kind of I've seen, you know, with the folks who came. But uh, it, it's very interesting, right? Because we got some folks coming out there from Paris, mm -hmm. and you guys had the office in Palato. So that what they told us at this conference that Creative or Creative is uh, the biggest company you haven't heard of. That was <laughs> that was their pitch to the American audience, right? And uh, by the way, I just learned today that Creative is the French. Right, version and criteria is how we used yeah, to. Yeah, we're one of the few companies who does not know how to pronounce it. The so name how, itself. how how does this work? Right, I like you know in Paris and Palo Alto, two different worlds, two different cultures, and I noticed like you know the Paris office has expats from all over Europe, right? Like yeah. you, you have like a really a lot of Eastern Europeans there. So how how do these two pieces work together? Like is engineering having both locations? Is Kind of, you know, Silicon Valley is the cradle of big data innovation. Like we, we, we see stuff coming out from here. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us a little bit how this distributed uh, company works? So the way it works now is that historically, of course, we have all the core engineering in Paris. Mm -hmm. But recently we started to hit the limits so that we cannot hire even more people in Paris. So that's mm -hmm. why we start to hire in other places. And one of the biggest places in, uh, is our office here in Palo Alto. Mm -hmm. uh, the way the engineer works work is split is all the infrastructure, except for the local one, of course, is done in Paris. All mm -hmm. the tools are done in Paris, and all the big historical projects I was talking about were done in Paris. Mm -hmm. uh, in Palo Alto, we have things which are easily detachable from that, like the search project I'm working on. Mm -hmm. uh, we still share the same infra. We still have to communicate with um, Paris on, you know, very big topics. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we are. Um, we are pretty com compact in terms of the amount of people we have each of those projects and it means that we can communicate efficiently uh, within the project since we are on in the same place and all the you know all the communication between the uh, across the ocean is kind of minimized mm -hmm. cool so uh, i think we learned a lot about uh, Krita today so really looking forward to, to a technical talk and maybe kind of uh, we'll wrap up with the question uh, I know you recently moved here, so so what do you kind of want to accomplish in the next year in your open source kind of community experience, right? What do you so you're here at the meetup? Uh, what uh, do you think is most interesting for you to learn, right? Like you know, for me as an organizer, what would you like to see? You know, what kind of topics would you benefit from if we invite speakers to speak on these topics? All right, so that's a very very good time for this question because just as I told you. Uh, I moved into the area like six weeks ago, so mm -hmm. I'm pretty new. And uh, I would just like to use the fact that we have a very diverse community here and you have, can hear about all these different topics. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would just try to broaden my knowledge of the, uh, the technical landscape. Mm -hmm. um, any specific technologies, you know, Spark, Kafka, Mesos, like anything which kind of is on the top of your mind? Uh, um, well, image processing is interesting for me. Mm -hmm. uh, natural text, uh, natural language processing is interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, applying machine learning at scale. 
uh, all that kind of leads to self-driving cars. That's probably one of the reasons why the topics the topics are so sexy. Okay. Uh, all stuff like that. Awesome. So and I think we've got it all covered. We did the self-driving cars conference in March. We're going to repeat the track on this in November. I think we've got the image processing. We've got the LP. So you know, I, I'm pretty sure we're going to cover this. So Perfect. I think you're a good place. All right. <laughs> all right. Welcome, and uh, looking forward to your tech talk. Sure. Thank you. Thanks a lot, guys.